Hello everyone, in this lecture you are going to learn how to create bar charts in Swift UI. So let's go ahead and get started. In the last lecture I covered how to create line charts and we use a couple of functions like get historical stocks and get yearly labels. If you want the implementation of these two different functions, it is implemented right over here. Get historical stocks is simply going to give you an array of stocks. And get yearly labels is simply going to give you the yearly labels from 2000 to 2020. So basically an array of 20 items. So how do we create a bar chart view? Let's go ahead and create it as a separate view. This is going to allow us to reuse it later. Also, you can create this in a different file, and you should after you have confirmed that it is working. But I'm not going to start with just the same exact file, which is my content view. And when it is working and I can see it's working, then I can move it into a separate file. Let's go ahead and implement our body property. And I usually just start by creating something very simple like bar chart view, and that's it. Now we can go ahead and put the bar chart view, bar chart view, and see that if it gets displayed or not. And you can see that it is displaying bar chart view. Perfect. So this means it's working. Now we have to send in the prices and the labels. So in order to accommodate the prices and the labels, I will create two different properties in my bar chart view. One will be values property, which will be an integer. It can be double or any other type, but I'm just using integer. And the other one will be labels, the labels that you want to display in your bar chart view. So this means that we need to make sure that we are sending these properties. So for values, I'm going to send the prices and for labels, I'm going to send the labels, which I already have received from my get historical stocks and get yearly labels function. Now, one thing to keep in mind for a bar chart view is that the number of values should be equal to the number of labels. So both of them should contain the same amount of entries. Because this is not a line graph that you can send in hundreds of points but two or three labels. This is a bar chart. So every single chart that you're going to create should have the accommodating label associated with that. Now we can go ahead and work on these. I'm going to start with the edge stack, which is a horizontal stack. And inside the edge stack, since I want to go through these different values, I'm going to use a for each. And inside the for each, I'm going to get access to the indices. So basically the array indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The ID will be self, which is going to give us the index. So this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, which basically ties up to the amount of values that are in the values array. Now I can go ahead and get the label. So labels based on whatever the index you're passing. And we will also get a particular value. This was the actual value of the integer or the number that we want to put on the screen. Now in order to create a bar chart, we are going to first start with just creating the actual labels. So label is actually pretty simple because it's simply a text view and we can just create it using the text view. So if I run it right now, you can see that it's not good because it's just going in every single direction. So you can see that we have a lot of different labels coming up. So we have 20 different values and 20 different labels. So let's start with not 20, but just five. Always start with something really, really simple and then we can work on on it later on. So there we go, much simpler, right? So we have now one through five and we have 20, 20 and going till 20, 20. And we're starting with the zero 
Uh, that's why we're only picking like five elements. Okay, that's fine. And it looks like it's printing up fine. All right. So the labels are there. What we want to do is we also want to put a rectangle. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle. Uh, okay, that already starts looking like a bar chart, but uh, the value of the rectangle will be based on a couple of different things. The width will be equal, so you can put any width you want, but the height will be based on the actual value. So I'm just going to go ahead and put value over here, and we may need to convert this into CG float. So let's go ahead and wrap this in CG float and see what it does. There we go. Okay, so we can already starting seeing our nice bar chart graph being displayed you can see that it's really not organized correctly we need to align the baseline to be equal so i'm going to go to my edge stack and i'm going to go ahead and say alignment is based on the bottom so now we can see that it's already looking really nice and it's all random so if i go ahead and refresh it again and again you can see the different values are being displayed let's go ahead and also fill it up with something so I can go ahead and fill up with the color blue so that looks a little bit nicer. And we can also have a little bit of fun over here. We can say that if the value is less than equal to 120, then we can go ahead and fill it up with red or else we will fill it up with blue. We can also go ahead and put the actual value on the top so that we know that what value that we are talking about. So we can say value. Okay, so there we go. We have different values placed on the top. All right. Let's also have a little bit more padding to it. So I'm going to go ahead and add padding. But I only want padding in a couple of different places, like leading and trailing. So I'll just go ahead and add padding and put a padding of like 8 for now. That's fine too. Now, this all works fine and our graph is pretty much done. But what about if I have more values? Maybe I'm not showing you the graph or the bar chart of five or six different years, but maybe I'm showing you for 20 different years. So if I go back to year 2000, and if I go ahead and say 20, so probably we have to go to 2021 or something, uh, we can see that we only see a couple of different graphs. I mean, we're starting with 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, so it's not really showing us all the different things that we wanted to see, right? So how can we do that? It's kind of like overwriting each other in the end. So in order for our to see more graph, we have to go ahead and wrap this inside a scroll view. So let's go ahead and wrap it up inside the scroll view. There we go. And we have to make sure that the scroll view alignment is horizontal and show indicators or shows indicators. We're just going to make it false because we don't really care that much about the indicators. And now if I run this, I can really see nicely the graph is being displayed. Is that cool that the graph is working perfectly fine? It's in the scroll view. And we can see the graph perfectly fine. It's really cool. And it didn't really require that much code. If I want my graph to be kind of like on the bottom part, I can go ahead and add a spacer and put it at the bottom. And I can also get obviously add any kind of a navigation thing. So I can say over here uh, stocks or whatever. And I can run it again. Once again, since inside a scroll view, we can see all the different years from 2000 to 2019 uh, and I think if you want to see 2020 or something then we will have to make sure that we are also getting that year so probably I have to go a little bit more let's say 2022 or something well I guess we don't really have that much values to plot over here so let's see there we go 2020 all right so there we go I mean this is how you would create something uh, a graph that you can, uh, you have infinite number. I mean, it can go all the way to whatever because it's a scroll view. So you can just keep on scrolling and it's just creating the graph. And we were able to do it so quickly because of SwiftUI and all the 
different flexibility the SIF UI is providing to us. So this is it. This is the bar chart view in SIF UI. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of Udemy courses ranging from SIF UI to MVVM Design Pattern, Intermediate Advanced Swift, Rx Swift, React, Async and Await, that's a new course that I released, Core Data also, Combine, Algorithm Design, MVVM Design Pattern for SIF UI apps, and also Firebase with SIF UI, a lot of different courses. And the best way to get these courses is to check out the YouTube description and you will find the links to all of these courses. So thank you so much and thank you for your support.